Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car. I'm in front of the Fiat 500L for ludicrously large. Roman and the intern Kyle have already done a review on this vehicle for like a first press event, but more importantly, we are up here, high altitude, Rocky Mountain Review, coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. As I said before, Roman has already reviewed the Fiat 500L, but we're really different people when it comes to the utility of a vehicle like this. We think differently. I think from the standpoint of somebody who has a small, young family, which I do have. Roman, who's ancient, doesn't think that way. He thinks of walkers and creamed food. The 1.4 liter multi-air turbocharged engine. Great little engine. Fantastic in the Fiat 500 apart. Pretty damn good in here because we're at high altitude and with 160 horsepower, you get good passing power. Could sound better. They should put one of the uh, Abarth's exhaust pipes on there or something like that. Give it a little bit more real. It's not so quick at high altitude, but it's quick enough. Best of all, 184 pound-feet of torque. Excellent. Off the line, a little slow, but once you want to pass somebody and you need that extra power, it's right there. And for a little family car, four people inside of it, that's me, my spouse, two kids, a bunch of other stuff in the back, it gets up and goes. Nice little engine. You have joined me in the best part of the Fiat 500 Luigi driving. It's a great driving car. In terms of driving, handling, and a rewarding feel, best car in the class. I'm talking about the Kia Soul, I'm talking about the Mini Cooper Clubman, and the Countryman with front wheel drive. It just doesn't quite add up to the fun nature that this car has. I haven't tried the manual yet, so I can't pit it against vehicles that I know have a really good manual transmission, but I can say this. With this six-speed dual clutch, it's a fun car to drive, and fun is huge. Fun for me can overlook many of this car's small flaws, not the least of which is the way it looks from the outside, which we all agree is a little unusual. Some people really like it though, some people not so much. It's not a 500. That's what I've come to. That's my conclusion. That's because someone took a pump and zoop, made it that, okay? But from the inside out, it's a wonderful car. Don't look at it as a 500. Call it a Luigi or a Cannoli or something like that. It's a vehicle that's built for small families. It's a vehicle that, okay, when you're looking at it, it's a little goofy looking, but from the inside, it's fantastic. Let me show you. You can't go wrong with this engine. You, you can't. It's 160 horsepower is not a lot, but when you're at a high altitude and you have a turbocharger, you don't lose that much of it. So it's genuinely fun. Torques up nicely. And this thing around corners is actually pretty good. I wish the tires were wider, maybe slightly lower profile. Do you see what I mean by the wheel size? It's just too small. The wheel opening's too small too. If it was a little bit bigger, I think it would give it a little bit more presence and a little less of a cartoony look. Here's another issue. This is a massive glass pane, but 
This is as far back as the sunroof will open. It looks like it would open to about here, but it doesn't. I don't know. I think that they could do a little bit better on that and maybe make a little bit of a wider opening. The Fiat 500 Luigi starts at around $20,000, give or take. This one, which is the easy version, goes to 25 and change. It's a little expensive. I think that it should be about $1,000 cheaper personally, but you do get a really good stereo system. It's the beat system with Dr. Dre's tuning. And then you get this amazing sunroof, moonroof thing, which is just extraordinary to look through, but it's not very functional. Fortunately, it does get a combined 27 miles per gallon. Me driving like an idiot, I've been averaging 25, and that's really good, especially at a high altitude. Look at the inside of this interior. It's massive. It gives it a mini, minivan feel. That's, that's what I'll call it, mini minivan. I've driven like the Mazda 5. It actually kind of feels like that. There's a lot of extra space in here. It's bigger on the inside than you think. Now the question is, do I fit? And of course I can. If you move this thing out of the way, I could sit there no problem. And I represent two golf bags and a small cooler. But very importantly, small families with strollers, it's built for them. It's got a low load in height. It has lots of room behind the rear seats. I'm able to get a stroller in here, a couple backpacks, a few angry kids if I need to. They all fit beautifully. It is truly built for a small family. And I'm gonna show you the other reason why. It's right over there. Baby seats, kid seats, they fit beautifully in here. And what's great is that the little mini me version can climb up in there all by himself, scramble up into the seat, no problem. It's easy for a parent to reach from the front to the back to grab sippy cups. And it's easy to throw things at children when they misbehave. All in all, the back seat is good enough for an adult. It's actually pretty comfortable. I can sit behind myself. But more importantly, there's a lot of extra storage room on the floor for extra things like blankets, coats, straight jackets, what have you. Another minor issue, 25 grand and no driving lights or fog lights down there. I'm really hard on this car and I know I am. I've been verbally abusive about its small tires, unusual looks, and the fact that I think it's a little too expensive. But it's kind of like a proud dad talking to his kid. No matter how good he played ball, you can always fix a few things. You know, no matter what, you can't be satisfied. And perhaps that's the way I am about this vehicle because I really like it. I really enjoy driving it. I think it's great on the highway. It handles pretty good despite its little teeny tires. It's, the brakes are great. Uh, not a whole lot of fade and I had a chance to really test them. And going around here on hard turns, granted, the cushion is really, really stiff, but my super big American ass and it's super cheeks, I can handle it. I can just kind of squish out and everything's all right. Okay, folks, we're gonna do zero to 60, obviously, in a spicy meatball. And shut off the AC. It's only 95 degrees out there. Here we go. Come on. There it goes. A little bit of a lag. Come on. Not fantastic. Not horrible. But that's about the same speed as the Mazda CX-5 we tested with the bigger engine. High altitude, hard on engines, bottom line. But I'm gonna try it again, and this time I'm gonna use the manual mode in the six-speed dual clutch transmission. Let's do it. Come on, baby. Spicy meatball, let's go faster. Avanti, come on. Slower. Eleven point three six. I'm a little disappointed because it feels faster, but you know why it feels faster? Because when the turbo does spool up, it has really good passing power. 
it's pretty damn good in the city just zooming around but you have to have it spooled up so you have to have it over 3,000 rpm or even actually 4,000 rpm to really get that surge to get a good oomph bottom line in terms of buy it lease it rent it or forget it i give the fiat 500 luigi a lease it it's almost a buy it but it needs to change its looks just a little bit for the fast lane car, this is Nathan Adlin. Peace! See that behind me? That's Red Rocks Amphitheater. World renowned, high altitude, amazing place. I've seen Jethro Tull, Rush, Black Sabbath, just endless awesome rock and roll there. And unfortunately, my spouse and my sister thought it would be really funny to get me to go to a Barry Manilow concert there, which is happening in a few days. Go to TFL Cars Facebook page to see pictures of me and a little bit of Roman suffering at that concert. As I said before, Roman has already reviewed the Fiat 500L and we're in a totally different venue. Now you see, the three, two. It's not so quick off the line. There is some turbo, turbo, tur there's turtle lag. Let's try again. It, and you see the window styling, and there is a problem with styling. I love this car, but 500. It doesn't share any of the parts. What the? Ah! <laughs>